Okay, here we go. We're going into the final stretch here. <laughs> we got it. Woo. Coming into the afternoon of uh, Meteor Adventure Expo. If you're still with us at YouTube, we appreciate your support back there, wherever the hell you are watching us from. Um, well, folks that are here, um, I need to say uh, one of our brands that are cornerstone at Meteorite is the Oberalp Group, uh, Dina Fitzsalewa, Wild Country, Evolve, and Pomoka. Um, they've been with us uh, from the inception of the company, um, and I've been lucky and fortunate enough to know, work with them since 2008, um, and I've known Ross here for, oh, I don't know, seven years, something like that, eight years, and Drew over here for a good, I don't even want to date us on that one, but a couple of decades on that one, and uh, we're really happy to have them here showing us the new product line for SS22. So without further ado, Sales and Marketing Director Ross Herr. Thank you. So, super excited to present to you from the Oberalp Group perspective. So, at the Oberalp Group, we wear a lot of different hats. We're a family owned business and we own six different brands here. Logos there, and we'll get into the, the house that we, we claim within that group. Uh, the house and our home, so the next slide there. Uh, is super important to us, like where we come from, why we do what we do, why we're relevant to chat with you guys and, and build these products is, is super important to us. So our home in the Dolomites in Bolzano, Italy, is this you know, representation of us in a building. You know, the, the way it was manufactured, the use of materials, the, the process in which it's heated and cooled, it all reflects the values of the group at large. And that's a, that's a really important thing for us. So, so stepping it back to, to the group before we speak to the brands and the products and the technologies is always kind of a really important place for us as a baseline. Um, and so what makes up our home and this house of brands? And where does our inspiration come from? It comes from the Dolomites, the, these just impressive, unique, just visually uh, incredible mountains in the north of Italy. And that's where our passion comes from. And that's really where we are based on. We're a group of, I think, next slide there. So, so like, you know, like, where does our passion come from in the Dolomites there? And, and how do we foster the people and the group and, like, everything that it, we're built from comes from that home, first and foremost, our place of inspiration, and, and then, like, what our value system is, you know? So it comes back to, like, why are we relevant? Why are we here to speak to you guys about product and these activities and everything that we do? And why do myself and all of our colleagues have this opportunity to be so involved in these pieces. You know, I feel really, really lucky to be a part of a team here just right across the street, and I wish I had been a part of some of the other conversations that you guys have been having so I could build on them and lead into it. But, um, so, but back to that, that why and, and who we are, um, and so I think maybe go two slides forward. You know, and so like what drives us as well. Like, so it's people, it's place, it's home, it's inspiration in the mountains. And it's this moral compass coming from like our value proposition as a family owned company that really cares at the bottom of the, at the end of the day, like there's a ton of people that really, really care about what we're doing here in this company that give all of us this opportunity. Um, and so I always try and maybe tell a story, you know, that's like, maybe just unique to me and like how I've absorbed some of that and how I've absorbed that value system and, and the, just the depth that the company has. And so in the next slide, maybe the story that was kind of the most after my last trip there, I'm walking out of the office after a long day and there's this just enormous table of vegetables out on the table in the, just the lobby of our office. And, and that was, I was, I have a greenhouse. I'm like super passionate about like trying to grow. And so I'm just like, impressed because I live at 9,000 feet and it's hard to grow anything, you know? So these huge, beautiful, rich vegetables on this table and this guy selling it to the employees as they're walking out the door. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool just to have access to fresh vegetables at the baseline. That's awesome. And then we're walking out and my colleague's telling me, well, yeah, no, those vegetables are grown in the garden right here in our office. Um, and those plots are given to a group of 15 young refugees as part of this integration program where they so they have something to do they have a way to immerse themselves in the community here when they arrive so they have you know some sort of just baseline start to get going in this otherwise just maybe overwhelming city of Bolzano 
And so these plots are given to these refugees. They are also given like the materials and everything they need to grow. And you know, full circle that we even use the recycled down from our jackets that doesn't hit the grade that we need um, in our RDS standards is used as uh, you know instead of what you would use like a mulch or anything else to protect the evaporation of the soil or to also kind of fertilize the soil. So we're using that like leftover material in there as well. And so just like that story as well as like so many others as you're immersed in this company just come up time and time again. And so, you know, like, well, I feel putting up slides, you know, that say people and passion and contribution, they're, they're otherwise like big statements that might not have depth if you don't really know like what our whole team is able to go through and these opportunities that we have even here as a subsidiary business in Boulder to live through that and to, to have that leadership at the, you know, at the very top and at the family of, of who we are to, to guide us forward. So um, next slide. So yeah, just leaning on that we're a family business. So, um, and then maybe next slide again. Uh, so the Oberau family, the, the Oberau family, uh, Heiner, our president right now, his daughter is involved and in, in actually just started our sixth brand, which we'll be bringing to North America at another point in time. And his son-in-law, who's involved in the sales and management of these brands, you know, so they are a sixth generation family in textiles. I had the chance to hang out with Heiner on one afternoon and, you know, kind of, you get this opportunity, you're going to ask a bunch of questions, you know, and he's telling me about horse and buggy from Vienna, Austria to Bolzano of raw material that they would then turn into fabrics or trade in. And that's like their family's start. And that's like where their heritage lies is like just immersing themselves in raw material and textiles and, and that, you know, that heritage that comes from it and that had spawned off into the inspiration behind all these other brands. So um, today, next slide. Like that very modest beginning and, and you know long heritage has turned into a pretty significant company that affects the lives of a ton of people. Um, you know we're we're almost 22 people in the office today in Boulder, um, and then you know our sales reps and our global team you know of over 700 people, many different business units, and 5,600 retail stores. It becomes a point where you know a lot of people are counting on your business to you know, add value and, you know, how do we add value? Where do we add value is, is certainly what I would like to speak to a little bit about today when your reach becomes so big. Um, so next slide. So, so yeah, so all of that makes up this house of brands um, and who we are. And the next slide kind of opens up to who are our brands. So just one short year ago, we were five brands. Two short years ago, we were four brands, um, you know, and so, these brands have all received an opportunity to come into this house where right from the top level with Heiner, he has seen a brand that just wasn't able to live up to its potential for, for all sorts of different reasons, whether it was the capital investment, whether it was the access to the supply chain, whatever those things were, identified them, but first and foremost identified a brand story that really resonated with our values and everything that I spoke to, you know, like something that would really drive the vision and, and align with the house is, is so core to what we do. So our most recent acquisition was Evolve, which is a, our only American, uh, North American based business out of LA. And that was just two years ago. And that's been a really exciting program to build out. Their office is still in LA. Um, and then operations still are managed here in Boulder. And then Lamont on the next slide, uh, was just presented at our spring convention. And Lamont is Heiner's daughter's brand that she developed uh, and has been working on over the past couple of years to have something very female-centric, very core to her, and what she identified as this, this missing segment where there just wasn't enough attention you know, from a full female-led team all the way through and the access that the Oberal Group gives her uh, to bring that to market. So we're not bringing that to the North American market yet, but it's certainly something to, to have in mind as you see things from the group and as uh, we continue to progress in the future. So next slide. So the expected at a presentation like this is to talk about really cool product, you know? And, and for that product, the assumption is that it's, it should be good and that it should add value. It should be better than the thing that you saw from us or anyone else last year. And 
frankly, that's a low bar anymore to achieve, right? I mean, we have access to so much information, so much resource to just incrementally make that shoe fit better, to you know, hike better, to feel better, to look better. Like that's, that shouldn't be that hard, right? And I think our consumer today and our brand and our group and our house with everything that we've spoken to, like that bar is too low and it's not enough. And so anymore when our brand thinks of it, you know, like if we're gonna touch something, build something, work on something, it can't just be better, it has to have more purpose, it has to add more value, and we need to reduce our impact of how we're building it and that whole system you know, that I know has been a major theme for you guys in the past couple of days as well as just like the global industry at large. And so um, a good product, not good enough. So the next slide is kind of how are we communicating what we're doing as a brand to go beyond just building good product, but thinking more about the, the impact of our supply chain, the impact on the people building that product, the impact and the value that that product's really bringing beyond just that physical experience of a better day in the mountains. Because at the end of the day, we can make some, your day better in the mountains with our systems, but it has to have more. So Salewa Committed is Salewa's more organized, formalized approach to communicate our CSR story, our value system, and to make it more clear to the consumer, as well as just to align product management through you know, countless different divisions and teams to just have a central goal and alignment on all, what the bare minimum is of the contribution or the supply chain or, or value proposition of our company. So next slide then. So what makes this, so for a product to have a Salewa committed hang tag, we're talking about just the Salewa brand now and that close tie. It needs to have uh, this as the mandatory piece. And this is third party mandatory chemical verification. So we, are, ha we have all the way through our supply chain, third party team company that is verifying every single material that ever could show up in our products. So no matter what we know, if anything ever happens outside of like our original brief, our original plan, our expectations, you know, we tell someone something and are we 100% sure we're getting that? So chemical verification is a huge piece of it. Uh, and then monitoring the factory. And that's the, the labor practices, the you know, time, that's wages, that is conditions, that's everything. And these are all third parties that we are investing in that are gonna monitor that supply chain every single day and touching base with that and reporting in on that. So that's just a, a mandatory piece. Then when it comes into the in individual products, uh, we have some special certifications or, or just requirements of what we're building out. So everything needs to be PFC free, upcycled, recycled, natural, and RDS down. And so not every material, every product's gonna have all of these materials, but they have to have at the minimum one of these, but most are gonna have several of these requirements within them in order to meet that bare minimum of what we would allow to pass through our supply chain going forward. So with our existing, uh, you can just click one more to order in for the badge there. So not everything in the Salewa brand is Salewa committed yet. It's just not possible to change over the whole thing, but it really is this commitment of incremental improvement time and time again that as we move forward, as we make better products, as we maintain our promise to do more, that we have this guideline at the bare minimum that we will exceed time and time again. And so, um, you know, one of the examples of that, the previous shoe in the first slide was our, our brand new Wildfire 2.0. That Wildfire shoe has been in the line for a really long time. It's truly the third, maybe fourth iteration of the shoe, but claiming with the Wildfire 2 tag. So on this shoe, you're gonna get better use of material that has less weight in TPUs and, and different rubbers that have less waste on the supply chain, but also you're gonna get a recycled upper nylon in the fabrics for it. So just some bare minimums that we can do as we update the aesthetic, as we update the fit, that we're also updating our materials as we go across that line too. Um, so yeah, is it a better shoe? Absolutely. But it's also gonna have an improvement to our supply chain. And then if you go forward one slide, this next piece here is the, the Mountain Trainer 2 Mid. And, and this, is, this is a legacy product that we've been building for a really long time. And this is a mid-duty trekking boot. So heavy-duty would imply maybe crampon compatibility or, or like higher Himalayan summits. So mid-duty is going to be a boot that's going to satisfy years of heavy pack 
wear and tear, miles on the trail, technical terrain. And what we've done in the, the most basic sense on this one in the next slide is addressed the aesthetic and the fit, but also addressed our midsole and outsole package. And so what used to be a, a TPU, an EVA, co-molded, built midsole that had great performance characteristics is now a dual density PU midsole. And that dual density PU midsole is 15% lighter, which is awesome. But again, like it should be a lighter boot, it should fit better, it should hike better. But also through this process of a dual density PU midsole, we're reducing 50% of the waste material in the connection of the upper and the lower and the shavings and the, like just the manual process to connect those two. And we're also reducing 50% of the solvents needed to apply and connect this material to our uppers. So, you know, it's, it's that incremental improvement that everything is looked at of how it can be just a little bit better beyond the functional use of it. Next slide. Uh, that was just a representation of the, the cushioning. And then so uh, the last shoe I'll show you from Salewa is in you know, our, our crossover of what we would call Alpine life, you know, be mountain casual here in the US. And uh, this is a wildfire platform that we've known and love and use. Um, but now we're gonna be using a cotton canvas, uh, a recycled cotton canvas hemp upper. So it's an upper material that's lighter, that's super breathable, has all the performance benefits of the hemp and cotton, and uh, it's gonna be super comfortable, but also has a lower environmental impact on what we're using to build our products. So um, those are the three new shoes that we're bringing to market. And again, yeah, they're better shoes than what we've ever built before, and they also have a better thought process of how they're being built as well. Um, next slide. So as a brand, you know, if you were able to immerse yourself in the global vision of Salewa and, and the, the full activity spectrum, you're getting a much bigger brand than what we have every day here in North America. But we're also, you know, every year looking at how much more of the brand can we bring to the North American market and add value, where are those opportunities? And our office is uh, full of children anymore. Uh, we have a bunch of new fathers. And you know, so kids have been front of mind with our sales reps and everybody. And we have a really awesome footwear program as well. So the kids' shoes are gonna be coming to market new for summer 22 as well. Uh, it's a really cool platform that absolutely stand, like holds to the mini-me status where you know if you're wearing your new wildfires then your kid uh, can also be wearing their wildfires as well which have a similar build uh, a really cool technical platform and a really good uh, yeah performance value it's gonna be a shoe that you can hand off friends and family for years to come and then even we have a full Gore-Tex uh, membrane mid hiking boot for juniors as well um, so next slide, a really uh, kind of like considered basic project, but uh, fun is our, our approach on socks. And so we're keeping it pretty casual. We have like asymmetric mismatched socks with really cool patterns uh, using really good merinos and uh, tensils uh, to make a really comfortable product and something that will match up with our footwear really, really well. And you'll see greater communication where in our footwear, we've guaranteed two years and two weeks. And so those first two weeks, we guarantee it'll be blister free. And two years of the life of that shoe, we guarantee it's wear and life. So we have a two year warranty. Adding socks to that equation, and we're gonna communicate even better warranties and, and better collaboration of that platform and that system working together. So more to hear on that in the future. And then Via Ferrata. So who has done a Via Ferrata in the room here? Yeah, who's done one here in the US? Cool, yeah, I mean, a few years ago, no one had done one here in the US. They didn't exist, they're, they're brand new. Uh, in our home, in the Dolomites, they, that's the origination of the Via Ferrata. And so the brand has been immersed in this activity for, for generations. And uh, as more and more routes are being built here in North America, um, we have the full head-to-toe system to, to support that as well. And so our Via Ferrata lanyards that you'll see in the next ring um, are industry-leading, the best anatomic feel to those carabiners. 
anatomic feel and ease of use is safety in Via Frata, that you can always move that carabiner ring to ring and always have your system in place. So safety and speed and comfort all go hand in hand in these systems, which we're super excited about for next year. Lastly, um, and maybe one of the products I'll go into the tech on the most, uh, funny enough, showed up here about five minutes ago. Um, so I think in a year that we've all been through, we're all pretty comfortable with you know quick pace and changes and all of those things. So showing up five minutes ago wasn't you know necessarily the the hardest thing we've had to overcome in the past few minutes. But um, this is the Puma 3 helmet. And this is a really cool helmet for, for a number of reasons. Um, and there's just a ton and ton of tech, and that's definitely what people come here to learn about. So next slide. Um, we'll go this one more. So what are the needs of someone wearing a helmet in today's era is, is different than what it was in the past. Uh, the way people are climbing and what they're expecting from their helmet is much greater than what it was a few years ago. And those certifications that back those helmets hasn't changed at the same pace in which the use of them has. So a climbing helmet of, uh, call it today, has to pass a single penetration impact test from the top. Um, that's just been the standard forever. Uh, but I think a lot of people would know that as you fall, you're not always just worried about something falling on you. You're also worrying about the way in which you're falling. And people are using these helmets for skiing and mountaineering and riding their bike and all sorts of different activities, right? And so the way that we layer in the protection has to change as well. And we know that in the future, the requirements for helmets is going to change. So we're definitely building this helmet for what the future requirements of helmet technology will be. Um, so um, not only is this going to pass on that vertical test, um, we're also adding a lot more on the sides and on the back of the helmet as well. And if you could change, um, go, let's just go one more here. Um, let's go one more again. And I think there's a couple transitions here. If you just want to push them all forward, that would be great. So, um, so materials and what are we talking about when we're covering all those activities and all those different scenarios? We're talking about an EPP shell with a polycarbonate top on it. And that is two materials that you've heard of and seen before in a helmet. So that's not like the brand new news here. What we're talking about is one of the lightest helmets in the category with all of that technology and the way in which we're bonding those materials. So they're kind of like oil and water, the polycarbonate and the EPP. They don't want to connect to each other. So all forms of connection here in the past have had some sort of mechanical connection in order to attach that shell to the EPP, which means material, which means compromise in locations, which means that it's not going to just perfectly fit the aesthetic or the design or the shape that you're looking for. And that's where you get sort of, you know, odd shapes or different shapes and different uh, kind of compromise that has to come into that scenario. And so we've been able to uh, attach the EPP and the polycarbonate in, uh, without any of that mechanical uh, issue. And I'll pass this around so that you can feel the weight. Um, but what you're seeing is kind of a diagram of the different materials of the, the ABS poly and polycarbonate and the EPP. And so EPP, why is that the best material in helmets right now? It's because it's multi-impact. It has a rebound to it. It's not a single use where it destroys itself to save you. It will take multiple hits, right? And so you combine those two with a much thinner layer of polycarbonate, and you're going to get a much lighter material that's going to still have all of the impact, all the protection, all everything else that you need and expect from this product. Perfect. Change. Um, so yeah, so at 175 grams, um, this is just a crazy light, impressive helmet. Oh, I'll keep it moving. What's the price on the helmet? 119. Um, you can switch that, that. I covered all that. So changing gears to the Dinafit brand. So the Dinafit brand, when it comes to summer, uh, is all about trail running. And I have a clear distraction here with the skis, which I'll get to as well, because those skis are, are part of our summer workload right now. And I'll speak to why. 
But when we think about things in the DinaFit mindset, we're thinking about the head-to-toe activity. How can we build the perfect head-to-toe system to make your day better in the mountains? This all started with the low-tech binding to the boot, to the ski, and now your head-to-toe day in the mountains. For ski touring, we take that same approach in the summertime and our competitive spirit uh, towards trail running um, and kind of that 365 approach to the brand. So you have here visualized the men's DNA collection, which is that head-to-toe competition kit. And then um, in the next slide, just to reinforce, you know, where are we building everything off of? It's the same guidelines. We're using 100% recycled materials. We're building it out in all sorts of different ways. We're looking for how to optimize and improve our supply chain across all levels of what we're doing and across all brands. And if you look to the next one, um, you know, simple stuff that DinaFit does that is super cool is we bake an insulated phone case. And that insulated phone case is made up of all the scrap materials at our um, PolarTech factory. Um, and then we have this, which is all coming from the trimmings of our backpack assembly line. And so it's the leftover materials of other products that we're building into finished goods. So this is a running belt for 50 bucks that can hold a couple of goos, your cell phone, your poles, anything like that. Um, so a bunch of really, really cool uh, things that we do just through our factory relationships to keep on the theme. So here's the ladies' kit. Uh, and we'll speak most especially to the shoe she is wearing today in the Sky DNA. Um, change over two slides for me. Uh, keep going, we'll skip. So this is the Sky DNA shoe. And so this would be another opportunity to go s- deep into the details of what we're doing and what the construction is on this shoe, which is a really, really fun story. Um, so. Sky DNA, like what is a sky shoe and and why we build out sky and ultra and alpine. What we've done is sort of thought about like where are people running? What are the distances that they're looking for? What do they need at those different distances? And like how do we build specific to that activity? And so the sky shoe lands in our most performance-based category and shorter distance for the average person, but more about the performance of the shoe, the sensitivity of the shoe, the traction of the shoe, for something like a sky race where you're running from bottom to top as fast as you can and it's just a a real effort in a short period of time. So that's the the original brief for a shoe like this. Um, Unique to this shoe is going to be, if you want to change slides here, the the midsole will start there is a a PBAX midsole and if you know the brand from the winter time, PBAX is a material that we've been building ski boots with for a number of years. Um, how did we go to? Yeah, it's fine. Um, <laughs> uh, so PBAX, PBAX is going to be a, a, a material that's now, instead of a hard form plastic shell, it can also be used in an expanded foam application, which gives more responsiveness, more feedback, and more durability over the life of that shoe. And all of those things are really important to this build package. So something that is not going to absorb the energy, but actually give you a little bit more life and a little bit more feedback out of the shoe um, and not just take and absorb all of that that you're putting down. Um, We're a little bit lighter. We're going to show we're using a lot of lab testing that we have access to now um, where we're really able to narrow in exactly the right durometer that you're going to get the most longevity, the best weight to kind of like padding and protection ratio and really narrow it in at at the highest and best level, which is is pretty exciting. And then we wrap that with a light based Vibram outsole, which has a mega grip compound. So it's super tacky in all conditions and something you're going to be really confident in. Um, On top of that, we've taken a speed lacing system and given it two different zones. So instead of the traditional one pull system, you've got two different pieces here to pull from, which is going to give you better zone and better uh, modification of your volume across that. Uh, You're going to get always from DinaFit, you're going to get a toe bumper to protect you, uh, a better cockpit in the heel, which is a TPU uh, cockpit here. And then in this shoe, again, similar to the Mountain Trainer 2, the way we're able to assemble these materials is with far less um, glues and solvents, and we're actually stitching your insole in at different locations instead of glue as well. So you have far less material in here uh, to build it out. So 
I think I probably should have been cueing you to move slides through that, but if you want to jump, um, maybe just go back one and you have a visual of just where that construction lands, uh, how we've been able to layer those materials and stitch that together. So a super impressive shoe that we're really excited and proud of. Um, we'll come back to the skis. Uh, so last brand that we'll speak to today is Wild Country. Um, Wild Country was our, our youngest brand in the portfolio up until, until recently. A UK-based brand, uh, if you'll go to the next slide, that uh, opened up a whole new category and way of climbing. So the, the cam really changed how people can climb, how they can move through the mountains, and how they can leave no trace, essentially. You know, your protection that you use doesn't leave an impact on the rock. It doesn't have to be left there for someone else. So, you know, prior where you were hammering in a, a nut or a piton or, or some sort of material or, you know, drilling things in at some point, you know, like it was defacing and kind of changing the way in which you'd climb, where cams were able to, you were able to climb from the bottom up with a high level of protection and to remove all that protection on your way out. So it really changed the climbing that we know today. Um, now, Wild Country is in its kind of like full revamp of this product again. So uh, it's our third time that we've rebuilt the whole collection of Friends, and the zero offsets is the, the last product to be touched in that collection. So we moved to a double axle Friends five years ago now. Um, then we added the, the Zero Friends last year, which is our smaller finger cams, and then now we've added offsets as well. And so offsets give you just more capability, more placement options, and uh, for us, it just fits in line with our color coding, our sizing, and the different load choices. So you get the, when you're looking at your colors, your sling matches to your uh, smaller lobe there, and then your trigger matches to your larger lobe. So if you already know your sizing and you know this is X size, you can still place it with the offset and using the same kind of color matching setup as you had previously. Uh, these we're actually going to introduce this fall as an early introduction, so we'll have a small first run of production that will deliver here in September, and then the rest of the production is planned for uh, January and February. Uh, beyond that, the Wild Country brand that began its life in trad climbing, in speaking to that traditional climber, that traditional climber has usually kind of cut their teeth, so to speak, in a bunch of different ways, whether at the gym or you know, with a strong mentor. They started somewhere else to become a trad climber. And so the brand has uh, kind of like opened itself up to make sure that we're we're helping support the community of climbing at a much broader level. And so we've got a ton of information to support that today. Like who's at the gym? What are they doing? Where are they going? Um, what kind of grades are they climbing? What are they looking for in products? And, and like what's the next trend or the need of that climber as this sport progresses so much in its first Olympic year? And so from there, we're building out more stories to support the activities similar to the other brands, where we're really looking at, and if you want to go to the next slide, um, introduction of younger climbers in better performance-based harnesses sooner in their lifespan, and then uh, capsule collections that support kind of like the full idea of what they're doing, if you want to go to the next piece. So uh, the Mosquito Harness, which has been a super successful product for us, a 220 gram sport climbing harness uh, with wear indicators for safety and really comfortable fit uh, to a full collection around that where you're gonna get your gym bag, your rope bag, your harness, uh, your chalk bag, and everything sort of fit for the identity of those people that we're learning more about what their needs are as a brand. Um, cool, you can skip through the next slides. So those are just kind of like the outlines from the trad climber, the backpack, and all the different pieces there. And then lastly, from the DinaFit brand, and to the, the distraction of the skis at a, at a July exhibit, is like so many things, you know, helmets showing up five minutes before your presentation, supply chain challenges, all the different things that all of us have dealt with over the past few years, 
uh, we have been in a later, or maybe call it just a different stage of, of what you would normally manage, uh, changed our ski production for this coming spring. Um, so it's one of those calls that you don't expect, you know, in March with your, you know, your brand manager that tells you, hey, you know, all of that stuff that you just sold and worked on and, and informed your customers on, well, it's, it's no longer possible to make that product, right? Um, and so uh, what do you do then? Um, we've been really lucky that in our ski production, we have been um, working really fast and really hard on like what is the future of our ski collection look like? And so um, I'll let the video uh, feed go to tell the story, um, and then we'll come back to it. What's up? It's Ross with DinaFit. We're here at Mount Hood, Timberline. We just got in off our flights. We're up above the resort already. And we're testing our new free ride series. Like a lot of things this past year, ski production had its challenges. But we've been able to move ahead and actually bring forward our new free ride skis one season sooner. So we're here to put the finishing touches on the new Free 97 and Free 107, which will be replacing the Beast series in our line. We've got the young guns here, Reese and Sawyer. We're gonna ride some chairlifts. We might summit, but we're here to just test some skis, have some fun, and get it done the next few days before we bring these skis to your door this September. So there's two two different flex profiles, and let you guys tell me like which you like better, and then I'll tell you kind of like what the differences are. That way it's like blind testing. Feeling like a nice stiff tail. We'll see. I'll I'll have to ski it to actually get a feel for it. But the free 107 and 97 have a pure poplar wood core with carbon speed stringers. We reduce the radius just a teeny bit to make it a little quicker. But we've also played with the rocker profile and the tip and tail. I'm really excited. I think we're going to have a ski that's, that's really stable, really quick, and maneuverable, but made to shred and charge. With the ski that we rode this week, it felt just like an upgrade from the Beast 108 that I was riding this last winter. It's handled really well, and I haven't seen any sort of uh, fault in it, and that's tricky to pull off. Uh, we headed up to the summit with all crampons, ice axe, water, everything we needed for the day, and uh, skiing with a backpack like that is really nice to have a tail you can rely on with the ski, just in case you get kicked back a little bit. They did a really good job uh, having this stable flex in the back of the ski that you were able to feel good. Uh, you can really take this, those skis and you know roll them forward and stay in control. freeze is certainly shorter. Um, you can feel the snappiness and the responsiveness in a turn versus the slarvy feel that you may have felt in a beast. Um, you can feel these skis just want to push you in, in the direction that you want to aim them. <laughs> I like them. I think that they're a sick ski. I like, I had a blast the whole time and every single time they were on the up I was like shit the ski's light still and right? yeah and, and just going out on those corn turns boof so good <laughs> like,
Right? So yeah, in a, in a really short period of time, we were able to take next year's ski program, put the final touches on it with a mad scramble to get the skis over here in North America, pull the team together with a couple of our athletes, get some real feedback in kind of the final needs of what we wanted to accomplish with that program. And then, you know, we do expect to be able to deliver it this fall. Um, and so, you know, when I was thinking about like what to present today and like where it'll go, I mean, there's so many things in a year that every brand is going through right now. And, and this was just like one of the, the really cool opportunities that our company, our brand, we were able to like have the opportunity through the Oberop group to, to really like do something better and, and cooler and, and more fun than canceling and you know all the different <laughs> challenges that you can otherwise be dealt with in a day. So that's it as an overview from the group. Thanks so much. Thank you, guys.